Let's talk about when we're working off the ground with stairways and ladders. Why are stairways and ladders used? Well, they use because we have access points of 19 inches or more to another elevation or another level. Stairways or ladders are needed. And today we're going to be talking about a little bit about portable ladders, fixed ladders, extension ladders, and why they're used in our industry. But let's focus a little bit more on a portable ladder. Before using the ladder that you read the placard on the side, it'll tell you the weight, it could, it'll tell you the capacity load that you can use for this ladder, and it'll give you all the other instructions that you need for using this ladder safely and correct. You wanna make sure that when you're using it, that the runs are very clean, no debris, no tripping hazard. You wanna make sure that there's no oil or no paint, nothing where you can slip on and so forth. You wanna make sure that when you're using a portable ladder and they come six feet, eight feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, when you're using a portable ladder, you wanna make sure that the three point stance as approaching the ladder is always used on all ladders. So as you begin to use the ladder, you wanna make sure that you got a three-point stance. Make sure that you proceed on the ladder cautiously using the proper techniques. Also using a step ladder, you don't wanna go no more than the last two rungs up because you wanna make sure that you got enough of your body in the ladder to stop you from tipping over or falling over. Never, ever stand on top of a portable ladder. You, when you're coming down, you want to use the same technique. Slowly moving down. You want to make sure that once, once you're off the ladder, you want to know the intended use of this ladder. You know what size the ladder, how much the capacity on the ladder, how much the ladder will hold you if you're carrying anything else up the ladder. So you wanna make sure that this ladder is, is for 300 pounds. So you don't wanna be 350 and then carrying something up the ladder. It's not suitable for that purpose. You wanna make sure that you keep the ladder clean and, and put back in its proper place for the next person. Also, when the portable ladder is being used, you wanna make sure that the proper grips are on the foot making sure that you get proper footing on the ladder so it's not sliding and moving along on you. You want to make sure that your cross braces is not bent or damaged or not turned in, that they fully extend it to make sure that the, label, the ladder is stable and suitable for someone to be on this ladder working off of it. Employers must Provide stairways or ladders at all points of access whenever there is a break in elevation of 19 inches or more and no ramp, runway, embankment, or personal hoist is available. Keep access points clear of obstacles to permit free passage by workers. If free passage becomes restricted, employers must provide a second point of access and ensure that workers use it. One of the things that you don't ever want to do with a portable ladder is take this ladder and take it somewhere and use it as an extension ladder. You don't want to bring it to the point where you having it, using it as an extension ladder because it's not for that intended use. I had a scenario where I personally used a portable ladder on uneven surface, surface, gravel, and it was the end of the day. I thought I can get the job finished in five minutes and the ladder lost control. I slipped off the ladder and could have been seriously injured uh, because I didn't use the ladder for its proper intended use. Never use a portable ladder as an extension ladder. It's a no-no. The following rules apply to all ladders. Maintain ladders free of oil, grease, and other slipping hazards. Do not load ladders beyond their maximum intended load, nor beyond their manufacturer's rated capacity.
Use ladders only for their design purpose. Use ladders only on stable and level surfaces, unless secured to prevent accidental movement. Keep areas clear around the top and bottom of ladders. If necessary, use a barricade to keep traffic or activity away from the ladder. Do not move, shift, or extend ladders while in use. Always face the ladder when moving up or down. Maintain three points of contact. Use at least one hand to grasp the ladder when climbing. Do not carry objects or loads that could cause loss of balance and falling. When using step ladders, never use the top or top step of a step ladder as a step. Do not use the rear section or cross bracing on step ladders for climbing unless specifically designed and equipped with steps. Metal spreader or locking devices must be provided on step ladders to hold the front and back sections in an open position when ladders are being used. We have here a fixed ladder that's connected to the crane here. And if you notice, the fixed ladder is up a little bit from the ground. So now, because it's 19 inches or more on this level, I need a step ladder to access myself to this fixed ladder. A fixed ladder is always in place, always connected to something that for its intended purpose, such as this crane. If the total length of the climb on a fixed ladder equals or exceeds 24 feet, the ladder must be equipped with ladder safety devices, such as self-retracting lifelines, outer cages, wells, or rest platforms at smaller intervals. Here we have another situation of an extended la uh, a fixed ladder that's connected to the concrete truck. Okay, so the same procedures when you're moving up and down a fixed ladder, you want to make sure that it's stable, that nothing is loose, everything is intact. You want to also use a three-point climb when you're using a fixed ladder as well. Two hands on, make sure the grip is there, make sure nothing is shaking, and you can proceed up a fixed ladder. Slowly, cautious. Proceed to the top level, okay? And it's the same way coming down. You wanna make sure one step, two hands, coming down the same way. It always should be a three-point of contact on every ladder. And if you have tools that you're using on fixed ladders, portable ladders, extension ladders, you need to take and make some kind of pulley or rope to lower the tool down before you accessing or departing from a ladder. You don't want to be in a habit of carrying tools or equipment up and down the ladder with you. Be careful at all times, follow the proper procedures in using ladders, and you will always come out safe. When using fixed ladders, they must be able to support at least two loads of 250 pounds each concentrated between any two consecutive attachments. Fixed ladders also must support added anticipated loads caused by ice buildup, winds, rigging, and impact loads resulting from using ladder safety devices. Individual rung ladders must extend at least 42 inches above an access level or landing platform either by the continuation of the rung spacings as horizontal grab bars or by providing vertical grab bars.
Rungs of individual rung step ladders must be shaped, textured, or treated with skid-resistant material to minimize slipping. The step across distance between the rungs of fixed ladders and the nearest edge of a landing area must be no less than 7 inches and no more than 12 inches. Fixed ladders must be used at a pitch no greater than 90 degrees from the horizontal, measured from the back side of the ladder. Next, we have an extension ladder, which is very important. One of the most used ladders we use in construction. Uh, it's very important because when you're using extension ladders, you can be at high elevations. So you want to always be careful to make sure everything is done right. When you first get an extension ladder, look at the signs, the placard on the side. It'll tell you how much weight, how much capacity load, and so forth before you even begin to use the ladder. Okay, we have the footing here on the extension ladder where you got a flat surface that we're working on today. So your foot could be straight out because it has the rubber on it that will stop any slide or any movement on the ladder. So it's good on flat surfaces. Now say for instance you on sort of slippery surface or you might be on some gravel or some little pea stone or so forth and you use an extension ladder. You might want to bring the feet up to where it can anchor in the dirt and anchor in the gravel to where you can anchor it a little better to get better leverage on the ladder. And then the side, you want to make sure that the ladder is always in the front using the correct way because you want your runs to be slanted in and not out. So you want to make sure that when you're stepping on your rungs that there's a little slant going up in the rungs that it's on the proper side. The second thing you want to do before you extend it up is make sure that you get your three, three feet above your, your surface and you want to make sure that you got the proper four to one leverage on the bottom. You also want to make sure you got the proper anchorage on the bottom where your ladder is tied off. In some cases, you might have to put anchor bolts in to make sure that the ladder is anchored at the bottom. You want to make sure that when you're using your ladder that there's no moving parts around, such as vehicles coming by or anything that can cause the ladder to be kicked, tripped, or moved out of place. Very critical. You want to make sure that once you get your four to one stance on the ladder, that your ladder is tied off on the bottom, and you also want to be tied off on the top. You want, be, as I said earlier, you're going up to different elevations. You want to make sure that it's secure and safe enough so it don't slide, don't move to the left or to the right, and you want to make sure that you're safe going up the ladder. Once again, you want to make sure now that your ladder is up. You want to make sure that there's no slippery surfaces on your run. Make sure your runs don't have any debris on it. And as you begin to climb the ladder, once again, you want a three-point stance climbing the ladder. Two hands, and you want the one feet always on the ladder. If you got two feet up, always three-point going up. One, two, going up. You get up to the top of your surface, you want three feet. You want to make sure you step off correctly, off your ladder to the side. The same way getting back on the ladder. You want to make sure that when you get back on the ladder that you got two hands and you put one feet on the ladder as you begin to come down. One of the things that we need to know about ladders is that when you're coming down, it's the same way going up. You want to face the ladder at all times coming down. You don't want to turn around and come down frontwards. You don't want to come down sideways. You want to make sure that you come down the same way that you went up the ladder, one step at a time, being careful, being slowly, until you begin to touch ground. When using extension or portable ladders, the minimum clear distance between side rails for all portable ladders must be 11 and a half inches. 
In addition, the rungs and steps of portable metal ladders must be corrugated, knurled, dimpled, coated with skid-resistant material, or treated to minimize slipping. Portable ladders must support at least four times the maximum intended load. Extra heavy-duty type 1A metal or plastic ladders must sustain 3.3 times the maximum intended load. When portable ladders are used for access to an upper landing surface, the side rails must extend to at least 3 feet above the upper landing surface. When such an extension is not possible, the ladder must be secured and a grasping device such as a grab rail must be provided to assist workers in mounting and dismounting the ladder. You never want to leave an extension ladder in place after you finish using it. You always want to remove it because of safety reasons. Someone can come by and hit it, a vehicle can come by and hit the rungs, hit the bottom, and tip the ladder over and you can cause harm to someone that might be in the vicinity. So you want to make sure when you finish that you remove the ladder. You want to brace the footing, bring the ladder back, lift it up one and bring it down slowly. The ladder is all the way down. You want to tie it in place, take it, you want to lower it down. Easy, lower it down till you got it down, and then you want to take the ladder and put it back in its proper place. Always store ladders back where you got it from to make sure that we're keeping everyone safe and keeping the ladders in safe condition for the next use. For more information on ladder and stairway standards, refer to 29 CFR Part 1926, Subpart X.